let's do some simple tests to identify some common metals found in coins. Aluminum, iron, nickel, copper, zinc, and silver. First, we'll do the ammonia test, which is a test for copper. I'm going to rub this Q-tip that's been soaked in 15 molar ammonia over the surface of this copper strip. Any copper ions present on the surface of the copper metal will react with the ammonia to form a blue colored complex. The vibrant blue color observed here is a positive test for copper. Ammonia can also be used to test for the presence of silver, as long as the sample of silver has a lot of oxidized silver compounds on them like silver sulfide. Ammonia reacts with oxidized silver compounds to form a brown black colored complex. Thus, a black color in the ammonia test indicates the presence of silver. The black silver complex form dissolves in the solution of ammonia. This and the fact that the oxidized silver compounds get reacted away make the silver sample appear to be quite shiny after this test. In the dimethylglyoxime test, a 1% solution of dimethylglyoxime, also known as DMG, is rubbed over the surface of some nickel. Some ammonia is also added to the solution to enhance the reaction. Dimethylglyoxime will react with any nickel ions present on the surface of the metal to form a cherry red colored complex. Thus, a slight red or pink color in this test indicates the presence of nickel. Use caution when applying the dimethylglyoxime test to samples of iron. Iron ions will react with dimethylglyoxime to form a complex, but the complex formed is not nearly as vibrantly colored as the nickel DMG complex. Here you can see a comparison between the DMG complex formed with iron on the left and the DMG complex formed with nickel on the right. In the copper sulfate test, a solution of copper sulfate that has been slightly acidified is applied to the surface of metals. On the surface of iron metal, copper ion reacts with the iron metal to form solid copper. You can even see the solid copper plate out with a slight orange color on the surface of the iron. Zinc metal also shows evidence of reacting with the copper solution. In this case, a black color forms on the surface of the zinc. This black color is most likely due to the formation of copper oxide, which is black in color. A possibility for how the copper oxide is formed is shown in the chemical equation below. It is interesting to note that while aluminum metal does not react with copper sulfate solution, it does react with a solution of copper chloride. Chloride ions enable the dissolved copper to penetrate a layer of aluminum oxide that exists on the surface of aluminum metal. The penetration of the copper ions allows the aluminum to react with the dissolved copper to form dissolved aluminum and copper metal. If you look closely, you can see some flecks of the copper metal forming on the surface of the aluminum metal. Let's try some of these chemical tests on some actual coins. First, we're going to try the ammonia test on this silver dollar and this nickel. First, we'll try the silver dollar. Well, the ammonia sure is making the coin more shiny. And we get the black colored product. I'd sure say there's some silver in this coin. Now let's try the nickel. It doesn't appear that the coin is becoming more shiny. But we do see evidence of a blue color, so that nickel probably contains some copper. Let's use some of these chemical tests to see if there are any differences between these two quarters. First, we'll use the DMG test. When I rub this quarter with a mixture of ammonia and DMG, I don't see a color change. So this quarter probably does not contain any nickel. When we apply the same test to this 1995 quarter, we do indeed see a color change. So this quarter does contain some nickel. Next, we're going to try the ammonia test on these two quarters. This 1958 quarter, when treated with ammonia, shows a black colored complex. This quarter contains some silver. 
Okay, now we're going to try the ammonia test on this 1995 quarter. In this case, we see a blue colored product. This quarter contains some copper. Finally, we'll try the dissolved copper test on this small silvery colored coin on the left. We see that a solution of acidified copper sulfate seems to have no effect on this coin. Let's try a solution of copper chloride instead. In this case, we see the formation of some solid product, indicating the formation of solid copper. So this coin is probably made of aluminum metal. To conclude, I'm going to try some of these tests on various coins. See if you can tell what metals are present on the basis of the test that I do. I'm applying the ammonia test to this particular coin. Let's apply the ammonia test to this coin too. Finally, we'll apply the DMG test to this coin. Be sure to let me know in the comments what metals you think are present in each coin. I look forward to hearing from you.